Hello, everybody. Dave Lehman again, President and COO of BirdEye. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've had some great conversations on the evolution of AI. We've talked a lot about BirdEye and where we're heading. Uh, hopefully, you guys joined us for some amazing breakout sessions with partners and customers like yourself. And if you haven't had a chance to check out those sessions, they're all being recorded and uh, you can watch them on demand. To close out our first day of view, I am so excited to dive into really how local brands and businesses can win with Google. As marketers and owners of location-based businesses, your customers and your prospects journey all begin on Google. That's the front door. And it plays a huge part in your online strategy. So I am ecstatic to welcome today two senior executives from Google to discuss how the partnership with BirdEye can help empower you to do more for your customers. First up, I wanted to introduce Uday Gadakar, the field CTO at Google, and he is deeply involved in all things generative AI and data. Uday has been with Google for almost seven years and was the co-founder at a startup within Google called Area 120 Startup Incubator. Also joining me is Kieran Bellari. He's the head of product management at Google's cloud for the AI group. He's responsible for generative AI, and he's been with Google for over four years. But he's got over 20 years experience in software applications and eight years in AI and ML across startups and larger companies. Thank you guys both so much for joining us. Um, Uday, do you want to kick us off? We'd love to hear a little bit more about yourself and the things that you're involved with at Google. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dave, for that intro. Uh, excited to be here. So Uday Gattaker, I'm part of um, Google, the Google Cloud team, uh, play the role of field CTO. Part of my job is to work with a lot of our tier one VCs and their startup portfolio companies. I think Google Ventures, Sequoia, et cetera. Um, but a lot of my time is spent with uh, customers like BirdEye, working with um, the executive teams to make sure that Google is aligned with you know, their vision, that we are providing the right level of service, uh, you know, products, uh, get feedback from them, uh, essentially make sure that they're successful. Uh, I was part of, um, I was lucky enough to be part of a um, startup within Google. So I was co-founder of a company called Demand, and that was all about bringing Google search data into uh, Google Cloud environments for our customers like BirdEye to be able to use. Um, so that was, so search is very near and dear to my heart as I, you know, work with Google. Uh, I'm very involved with a lot of the generative AI opportunities that we have as well. So excited to be here and to share with you. Um, so, Kiran, you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm uh, Kiran Bellari. I'm uh, in the AI products group within Google Cloud. And I work on two product areas. One is called Document AI, which is all about applying AI to extract, classify, summarize, and search uh, textual content and documents, right? All kinds of documents that typically businesses like yours would handle. The other area is around conversational area AI, which is where we apply AI to run digital chat or speech agents, which is used to drive customer support, sales, and marketing, also relevant to uh, companies such as yours. And so I work with, uh, I work closely with customers. I uh, develop products and then we basically take these products to market and uh, make sure that they help uh, companies like BirdEye build the right solutions for you. That's great. That's great. Again, w welcome guys. We're, we're going to get into a lot of the AI topics. Everybody's interested in, uh, in diving and learning a lot more there, but let's just start like a, a little bit more high level. Just, you know, maybe Uday, maybe you can kick us off. How can a, a local business win with Google? What do they need to be thinking about? Yeah, no, that's a great, great question. The, you know, Google's larger mission is to organize all of the world's information and make it you know, universally accessible, useful. And so, you know, we, we, you know, we believe that a lot of what people are looking for, what's top of mind, they start with Google as, as we all do. Um, I think that that brings forth this unique opportunity where, you know, if you're thinking about acquiring and retaining your own customers, you know, you have a whole host of capabilities that can go around that search bar, which is describing what's, you know, top of mind for someone. And as they search for that, you know, there's a whole host of capabilities around, you know, 
the Google business profile as one to make sure that your business is showcased on Google in the most appropriate way. Um, you know, and as they start getting more informed about your business, they can surely look at, you know, reviews that are around your business in, in Google. Um, then it's the whole notion of, you know, they have questions or they want to read more about your business. They could use, you know, the Q&A functionality in, uh, that we also have at Google, capabilities around messaging to engage and find out more about the business, understand, ask questions to really nail down as to what, what they want to do with that information and how they want to engage with you as a brand. And then, you know, there's other capabilities around, you know, reserve with Google where they can make an appointment for service or for uh, engagement. Um, you know, obviously the traditional business of Google around search is all about ads, you know, so businesses can surely go and, you know, buy ads and prominently display their brand or business uh, in the search result content uh, as well. And then there's also um, notions of, you know, seller ratings that can be also, um, you know, showcasing your business and, you know, the value that it can have. So, so those are some of the ways of, of leveraging what Google offers to consumers um, for businesses to, you know, further attract, retain their customers and to create a good experience overall. There's a lot there. It's a, it's a lot for a, for a local business. Kieran, Kieran what about you? What, what, what else uh, should the local businesses be thinking yeah. about? Uh, with Google. So one of the things I would add to what uh, Uday said was, uh, so Google, it's uh, we make a lot of changes, right, to our products, both to, uh, at a product level as well as to our underlying technology level. Like think, like business profiles, we're constantly adding new fields. We are making changes to our uh, algorithms underneath to like support better t text to speech recognition, a, a whole bunch of variety of different uh, changes that are happening. So it kind of it helps to kind of work with uh, with solution providers like uh, BirdEye who kind of take these package these up and surface them within the applications that you use, uh, so that you get the best benefit of uh, all the technologies that we roll out across Google. Yeah, it's uh, you know for a local business who's trying to clean teeth and you know you know fill fill people's bellies it's it's a lot so to have uh, have that kind of partnership makes makes a lot of sense and and again obviously bird eye focuses on specifically helping those local brands and businesses with their digital customer experience uh, but we obviously have a to partner with with amazing businesses like yourself Uday, can you can you talk a little bit about that partnership uh, from your guys side yeah absolutely you know when we look at the larger google ecosystem it can be quite um difficult for individual businesses to navigate that entire ecosystem. And I think that's why BirdEye plays such an important role in the middle. So I'm a huge fan of BirdEye. I'm part of, you know, the executive sponsorship team that works with the executives at BirdEye to, like Dave, to um, really make sure that we're working in sync to bring the best value to your customers. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely one of the most integrated partners we have that sits right in between, you know, in the Google ecosystem and enabling these capabilities that we just talked about, I just went through the list of. Um, so it's a one-stop shop to really enable success for these small businesses and for the, the various uh, brands, local brands as well. So I think that that's you know, such an important role that BirdEye fulfills and we cannot be more thrilled to be partnered with BirdEye. You know, it's, it's an exciting time in terms of what you know, generative AI and AI ML in general brings and our partnership you know, hopefully we'll bring a lot of those additional value added items to the customers and to their customers. So super exciting times. Yeah. Well, it's a great, great transition because, uh, you know, a lot of people are here to hear about, about AI and you guys are, are certainly no strangers to that. You guys have been in that game for, for a long time and, and, you know, and, and it's just, it's taken off like crazy in the last six months or so. Um, Kieran, you know, again, a lot of people new to AI on on this. What should a local business be thinking about in terms of AI, and and how can Google help them and work through through you know getting started on AI? Sure. Yeah. So AI has been a pretty, I would say, disruptive force that has changed and has potential to change the way we work, we play, we do get things done. Right. So in terms of uh, it, uh, it has implications on both uh, local businesses as well as large businesses and consumers. Uh, some of the areas I can think of where, where, where really local businesses can take advantage of this is one is in terms of how they engage customers. Right. So we think of uh, uh, 
uh, all the way from the kind of creatives that you need to build from a marketing standpoint to how you run support, sales, marketing, et cetera. So customer engagement is, I think you can get more done with less uh, using AI. The other area where it uh, has, a, 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 you can get a lot of mileage out of it is in terms of being able to automate a lot of transactions, operations, whether it's booking appointments. I think uh, Uday talked earlier about uh, our appointment booking capability, but now you can bring a lot more automation into that. Uh, being able to take orders, uh, online orders, mobile orders, et cetera, basically automating that process. And then the third one is really also improving efficiencies for your employees, right? So it's automating your internal tasks, email processing, back office automation, et cetera. So the scope is pretty, uh, uh, pr pretty ubiquitous in terms of how AI can be exploited in the various aspects of your business. And in terms of uh, Google's advancements, so Google has been in the AI for, for a very long time, and so have other companies. But in the last uh, six months or so, as uh, Dave mentioned, uh, there's been a, a pretty remarkable advancements in what, what's called generative AI technology, which also uh, basically accelerates the pace of innovation in all these areas that I mentioned. And we also recently, uh, we had an uh, we had a, a event called Next, where we announced a whole set of new products and capabilities uh, uh, around generative AI, which uh, I'm sure Bird Eye as well as uh, other customers of ours are uh, uh, will be able to take advantage of those technologies and be able to surface them to you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Uday, anything uh, anything to add on, on that side? Again, this is this is interesting. People want to hear what what's uh, what's Google doing with this stuff. Yeah, and I think for businesses as we look at it, and for local brands. What's really important is to make sure that you align the direction your business is going to how the world searches and what the world is expressing as their demand for things. And so towards that, using you know data and AI ML, I think go hand in hand. So using that data to really understand, you know, what does this mean for my business? You know, what are people looking for? What are we understanding from my engagement with our customers? How do you parse through that data to really figure out? you know, what, what remains your North Star as a business. And that data and the analytics, there's a huge opportunity for businesses to really get more, um, you know, in tune with it and really change the course of how they're doing things, adapt better to it. That, that's a huge opportunity that we have. And I think AI ML can definitely accelerate that path for our customers. And that's exciting. Uh, you know, we Google's a data company and it's an AI ML company and we can surely help in that journey as well. And on that, Uday, I think there's probably a lot of, not necessarily fear, but concern from a lot of businesses out there, right? They, they've tried to fine tune, you know, how they're found on Google search. Like, yeah. obviously, you know, search is, is such a key part of Google. And now AI is coming along. Like, what do business needs to be thinking about in terms of how Google is going to change algorithms, change the way, you know, that business shows up? Like, what? What should be people think about in that that regard? Well, I think if, if you think about what generative AI and just AI ML does to search, and you'll see this roll out to consumers that they search for, is it, it makes search even more useful. It makes search even more contextual. So as, as they start searching, they'll see you know, more helpfulness from search because they'll understand context. It'll almost be a relationship that you can have, an engagement that you can have that you could never have had before, which... Um, I think will make it, um, you know, show dramatic more value in terms of them in finding the services and the products they're looking from the local businesses and from, you know, local brands. And so people are going to take that relationship expectation that they have with search as it points them to brands to the brands themselves. And I think it puts a little bit of, um, you know, an additional responsibility on the brands to fulfill that. So as, it, you know, they, there's an expectation that will be raised in terms of expecting the brand to be more responsive or to have, be more accurate in terms of their listings or, um, you know, to be always omnipresent in terms of at least a digital presence uh, with them. And the good news about that is that, you know, generative AI and AI ML in general will allow brands to, you know, through BirdEye, for example, to be that and to meet those expectations. So it's a raising of expectations, it's a raising of helpfulness, it's finding things easier, finding things in a much more contextual way, and all that stuff I think is goodness. 
for companies because you know that's how it, it just is a better avenue to get their services and the products they require they want and they need and for those brands and companies to rise up to that challenge as well yeah i think uh for marketers who again are a lot of people watching this like that their their world changes right like creating yeah. new content like there's 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 this huge this huge opportunity for them in terms of like Kieran, maybe on your side, you know, working this AI into their into their current workflows. Like, how how should they be thinking about that? What's the right way for a marketer to really take advantage of what Google and uh, is rolling out there? Sure. Yeah. So, in terms of marketers, I think there's several areas that, uh, especially for marketers and location based businesses, right, where AI can play a pretty significant role. So the first one is around uh, content generation. Like marketers spend a lot of time creating content, whether it's a graphic or textual content or video content and being able to either for, for branding purposes, for a web presence, for offline presence, building ad creatives, et cetera. So a lot of that is getting automated through AI, which would, which would really dramatically boost productivity for marketers. So that's number one, especially in uh, for small businesses where uh, uh, resources are tight, right? When it comes to marketing. So that's one. The second one is how do you drive conversations with your customers, right? Being able to automate a lot of the conversations, like answering simple FAQs on your website, making sure that your your responses are on point, relevant, on time, etc. Uh, without, uh, while minimizing the human overhead behind that. So conversations is another one. The third one is around like workflows. If you think about uh, uh, the different marketing workflows that can be automated, whether it's basically email, an email responder or other kinds of workflows. And then finally, I think equally important is uh, reputation management, right? In terms of how do you detect uh, negative sentiment from customers in uh, either on Twitter or on, on uh, even on uh, uh, Google reviews, et cetera, and be able to manage that, which, uh, uh, Birdai probably has a, uh, I'm sure Birdai has a product or solution around that as well. And the, and one other area that uh, I have probably haven't touched upon is translation, right? In terms of automating translation, you have customers in different languages. So how do you provide real-time translation services, right? Whether it's text, speech, uh, or other, in terms of providing a better experience to your customers. So I, I see a lot of potential actually for marketers to take advantage of uh, AI and especially the new the generative AI technologies that we have. One of the things that we announced this morning when we introduced everybody to, to bird AI is the, the idea of, of human controlled AI, that not everybody is ready for full automation and for, you know, for, for everything to be, okay, set it and forget it. Udi, do you maybe... Can you talk about that a little bit of like where this this is in the evolution? You know, should people be okay? I expect my AI to do everything. Should it be a tool to help them, a co-pilot, uh, if you will? Like, what's what's the right balance there? Yeah, I, I think that you know, if you think about you know, even what was on Google's phones the whole time around, it was called Google Assistant, and we enhanced it further now with AI. And so, the assistant is a good word. Where it's an assistant to. Uh, a human experience. It is assistant to a brand. It's assistant to a company. Uh, it's an enabler, an accelerator, you may call it, where it can do things that um, you know are um, were, were initially just efficiencies uh, that were given to humans in terms of what they do. But but it also now can do things on the creative side. So there's a huge value of what you know it, generative AI and AI ML can do for humans. But I think that the real value comes when they work together, right? Because that's where the rubber hits the road, where you know there's the creative elements that AI does, but then there's additional validation and additional creativity that humans bring to the bear. And so the, them working together brings that technical excellence as well as that human creativity and oversight that comes together to allow for brands to do a lot of really interesting things at scale, right? So if you think about making sure that your brand's voice is expressed in the correct way, that messages that are on point to that, you know, AI may be helpful in creating that initial messaging, but then they can also always be a validation layer of the humans, making sure that that indeed is, is what is sent out to the customer and the customer experience is at that quality level. And then the great thing is that AI can learn from that, right? So as humans and AI work better and it def redefine things, AI gets smarter and, you know, does things even better. And so maybe there's less oversight required. So I think that that relationship 
uh, works really well. I think it's, it's, it's incumbent upon all of us as humans to work with AI to make sure we train it in the correct way, but also is used in the correct ways and applications. And, um, you know, what Google as well as BirdEye, we're providing tools and, you know, capabilities to, to allow for that, that fruitful uh, engagement between humans and AI. Yeah. Can, can you talk to us in, in, you know, our audience about what they should be thinking about in terms of data security and privacy? Sure, yeah. So when it comes to security and privacy, uh, it's topmost in terms of uh, Google's agenda. And uh, in fact, uh, when we build products, we probably have as much emphasis on that as we do on uh, building cool new features and supporting new use cases, right? So it's 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 front and foremost among uh, uh, everybody, all the way from engineering, all the way to marketing. So what we do is there are four or five different initiatives around security that we have uh, addressed in the generative AI launches that we've done. So the first one is around data privacy. So what that is, is essentially what that means is your data will not be used by Google for any kind of uh, uh, training or uh, model training or used for other purposes, right? So your data remains private to you within your uh, kind of confines of your uh, uh, instance. So that's n number one, and we we take we take a lot of these uh, uh, principles very strictly. So, uh, which in some ways, yes, it it does limit us in terms of how how much we can uh, enhance our products. But then we kind of we live with those guardrails, and we've 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 learned to innovate with within those guardrails. So that's one. The other one is around responsible AI. Uh, what we call responsible AI is a cross Google initiative, which where we make sure that the uh, AI outputs are safe for you, for your customers, for all your stakeholders, right? By safety, what I mean is we have like 16 different, different dimensions of uh, 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 of safety. Think of toxicity, drugs, violence, et cetera. So any of the content that's being generated, whether it's a chat conversation with your customers, an image or any text, if there's any sense of, uh, if it violates along any of these dimensions, you and it's something that uh, you can control, right? Or uh, Bird Eye can control it for you, where you can basically configure that, and we make sure that the content that's going out is to you and your customers and internal stakeholders is safe. So that's another pretty important principle. Uh, thirdly, we uh, do source what we call source attribution and grounding. What I mean by that is uh, generative AI models have, are notorious for hallucinating, right? So sometimes they produce content that may not be uh, correct or accurate, or it, it it has a tendency to make up stuff. So what we do there is we basically ground the content with uh, facts, right? So the facts that are well known either it, it's in the, your document corpus or within your data set, or it could be data set that we have from a, from a world, world knowledge standpoint, right? So you can, so that there anything that's generated by our models is actually grounded. And uh, you can even point back to the sources that were used for grounding, right? So there'll be a link that goes back and says, hey, this is where I got this from. I'm not making this up. So that's one. Then, of course, there are other initiatives. We recently uh, announced, uh, uh, we launched at Next, something called digital watermarking, which prevents uh, tampering or copying of artifacts, right? So think about your brand logos, et cetera. Uh, people can't just uh, plagiarize it, or, or even your brand, your text copy, right? Your ad copy. People can't plagiarize it, may take advantage of it, and make use of it somewhere else. Uh, and then, of course, the fifth one, which is equally important, is there's several compliance initiatives that are especially relevant to uh, various uh, regulated verticals, industries, healthcare, financial services, government, and also other other services. Uh, things like HIPAA compliance, right? So we take all that very seriously. Uh, SOC or ISO compliance, uh, PCAI compliance, uh, as it relates to uh, financial information. And then finally, uh, around data residency, right? Which is enforcing, making sure that uh, your data lives within the jurisdiction that it's supposed to live in, right? So, and a lot of countries have these laws where it cannot leave that. Uh, so for example, if there's data in the US, it, we make sure that it's in the US. It doesn't leave the borders because think about like Google is a worldwide, it's a global cloud service, right? So, but we do enforce data residency. So the data does not leak out uh, to to other uh, sovereignties or other countries. Yeah, um, one of the other key aspects that we talked about today in the launch of Bird AI was how do we make it contextualized? These large language models like Bard, you know, seem to speak English and and are so impressive. But we've also got 
you know, 10 years of review data on lawyers. So we can essentially add in a layer there to create either a smaller model, contextualize it to essentially speak legalese, right? Um, can you talk to, to us a little bit, Kieran, just about how, how those what opportunities there are, right? Because people want to not just say, oh, I speak GPT or BART or whatever. They want to say, okay, I want this model to work for my business and my my customers. Sure, yeah. And and as you said, Dave, context is everything, right? When it comes to these large language models, uh, the more context they have, the better will be the response. The more on point will, will the response be, whether it relates to the whether the context is basically the brand, the the product offering of the company, or even the personalized uh, uh, data that the the user might expect, right? So, so there are a few different areas technologies that we offer. So the easiest and the the low hanging fruit is really what we call few shot prompting, right, or zero shot prompting, where you would include a lot of the context in the queries itself, and that's something that uh, Bird Eye could do to make sure that uh, the models actually respond with uh, on-point content, right? The responses uh, accurately and comprehensively address the questions that are being asked. So then you can also go through levels of different train, what we call tuning the models. Uh, we have something called few shot tuning. We have something called uh, fine tuning, which requires more data. And each of these techniques that I'm talking about requires more and more data. And then there's something called reinforcement learning, which, which kind of depends on the customers which uses a lot of your users' data to, to assess whether it's like a thumbs up versus thumbs down to assess whether the content is on point or not, right? So there's all these different technologies that Bird Eye can take advantage of you, uh, advantage of and basically deliver you the best experience that's domain specific. That's great. That's great. And, uh, you know, a lot to that. And uh, I guess that's why we're here to, to, to help uh, take advantage of all, all of that stuff. But guys, thank you so much. Uh, this was great. I think, uh, you know, both in terms of educating a lot of people on, on what's there, what Google is doing to hear more about this partnership. Uh, I guess, Uday, you know, take us away. Any, any sort of final thoughts or final words uh, for the people out there? Well, for one, I mean, my thoughts go to what a historic moment uh, in you know humanity we live in. Right? The change is happening in such an exponential way. Generative AI and AI ML, generally speaking, and, and data is changing the world in front of our eyes in some really powerful ways. I think that brings about this um, awesome opportunity that we have in front of us, but also responsibility to use that uh, in meaningful ways, in ways that benefits humanity, in ways that we can drive our business better, et cetera. So it, it's just an incredible moment in time where we're getting this bird eye view into um, how the world is changing in such a rapid way. And, you know, it's time for us to embrace that. So just want to thank you for having us on here. And hopefully, you know, we shared some value that could be useful to you and your businesses. That's great. Kieran? I would echo what uh, they said, right? So if you think about generative AI, it's a pretty transformational technology and pundits have compared it to the the iPhone disruption or the internet disruption. And, and so I think it, it does have the potential to change how we work, how we play or get things done at every level, right? As a consumer, small businesses, larger organizations, um, governments, and so I think it, it, we really need to take advantage of this and uh, benef uh, but businesses that take advantage of this will benefit from it more and see, see rapid improvements. That's great. Well, gentlemen, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. For those out there, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this, this session and in, uh, in the day full of content that we've, we've brought you. We still have some uh, great sessions tomorrow to come check out. And there's also live office hours. So if there's things on the product side or the business that, that piqued your interest, come join us. And we've got our experts standing by to help you out live. And uh, thanks again. Enjoy the rest of you.